What's up, everybody? Let's Talk Jets Radio. It's a rainy Monday morning, and this feels like deja vu all over again. And this is a conversation that so many people, it seems like, especially on Twitter, don't want to have because everybody wants to put up their hot takes defending Zach and being a good fanboy, that they don't want to have an honest conversation about what the hell is going on right now. Now, yes, I don't know how many ways I could say it. Zach was not top three or maybe even top five in terms of what physically took place on the field yesterday. And I'm not even saying you should bench him right now. Give him another two games, I'm fine with that. If it doesn't look good, you gotta be ready to pull the plug. I don't know why a veteran wasn't brought in first off back in July, but then as soon as Rodgers goes down Tuesday morning, another veteran should have been in here. I don't know why that's like so hard for some people to understand, but there's a greater conversation that needs to be had. First, there's the, the mental and emotional letdown of losing your leader and the trickle down of that. And yes, clearly that affected everybody in the locker room. There was enough momentum on 9-11 with the crowd noise and everything else to kind of carry that through, you know, to carry everybody through that game really, where it was like, let's do it for Rodgers. Now reality sets in and what do you get? Everybody with their head up their ass, right? So to me there's a greater conversation that needs to be had when we start looking at things physically on the field right you see Dwayne Brown getting beat we want to blame the offensive line we see shitty play calls we want to blame Hackett and I'm not saying they don't deserve blame because they do but there's an obvious trickle down effect that happens when you have a quarterback that you're trying to cover up when you have a quarterback that didn't make one attempt of more than 19 yards against the Buffalo Bills and was 0 for 4 on those attempts against the Cowboys, what do you think is going to happen? Exactly what we said all week is going to happen. Teams will crowd the box and they will take your strength away, which is the running game. If you can't run the ball and you're constantly third and long, you'll get what we got yesterday, one of 10 on third downs. And that included some third and shorts as well. How many times are we going to try to put lipstick on a pig and say this isn't Zach's fault on a greater level? Again, individually, you can look at many different plays and say, Dwayne Brown, that was you. AVT, that was you. Beckton, false start, that was you. McGovern, Tomlinson getting shoved around, that's you guys. But how many times did we have this conversation last year and then suddenly Mike White goes in there or Joe Flacco goes in there and they make the offense look easy and suddenly 300 yards passing looks pretty easy suddenly getting over 50% completions doesn't look so hard everything when Zach is under center looks difficult and he may not be the main culprit but he is not doing anything to help and that is a problem People don't understand that there is a lot more that goes into quarterback play than just ripping the ball and showing mobility. Case in point, everything we watched in training camp from Aaron Rodgers, I'm not saying there's another vet that could do what Aaron Rodgers could do, but certainly there's another vet that could see things possibly a little bit better and a little bit quicker. Processing speed, getting in and out of the huddle fast, getting up to the line quick, being able to do hard counts so you can see who's coming from the defense and who's not. Cowboys weren't even blitzing. Half the time, it was Parsons on an island. So do you think Rodgers would say, hmm, I have probably two and a half seconds to throw this football before I'm getting my ass beat. I need to have a check down I can go to. Or I need to adjust the protections and put a tight end over there if the fucking coaching staff isn't going to do it. These are advanced level quarterback things that Rodgers was doing all of training camp that Zach is not capable of doing yet. Hence the reason he should have been watching all season long. If you really wanted to save this kid, you let him sit all season. You let him watch. And this is a new offense too. We're expecting him this early to be able to pick all this shit up. There is so much that goes into being a good quarterback. Getting the ball out quick, making the adjustments, knowing your checkdowns, reading defenses. You know, the, the one deep ball to Garrett Wilson, he locked on him the whole way. You know, even Romo pointed it out. Like there, there are so many ways that fans are just trying to simplify this. Well, oh, the offensive line got beat. Zach had no chance. It would have been the same shit with Aaron Rodgers. No, it fucking wouldn't have. The game, the game plan completely changes with Aaron Rodgers. The game plan completely changes for the opposing defense with Aaron Rodgers out there. 
Everything changes when you have a quarterback that you have to respect on defense. Everything changes. So I can't sit here and say, oh, well, you know, this had nothing to do with Zach. We can blame everybody else but him. He was the least of the Jets' problems today. You're ignoring the obvious trickle down. And we've seen it before. We've seen it before. This is deja vu all over again. These are the conversations we've had for two years. Zach's rookie year. Oh, it's not him. It's not him. You got to give him time. Mike White goes in there like it's nothing, throws 400 fucking yards against the Bengals. Last year, we see the exact same shit. Flacco and Mike White. No problem. But for Zach, getting over 50% completions is suddenly, it's an accomplishment. Having two or three good throws a game is an accomplishment. Being the leading rusher is an accomplishment. Not realizing that we can't run the football because teams know what to do when he is at quarterback. There is no threat of a deep ball. There is no threat of him beating you. Defenses are not worried. They don't fear Zach Wilson. So I'm willing to give him a couple weeks. Like I said, I'm, I'm not ready to just bench him right now. I don't think Tim Boyle is a better option. And if you're going to bring in somebody else, they're going to need a few weeks to pick up the offense. But at this point, I mean, to me, all the signs are there. I think we know where this is probably headed. And the crazy thing is, I actually think they can beat the Patriots. You know, watching them last night, although they, they did go down to the wire, they gave the Dolphins a, a pretty solid effort at home, I, I do think they're beatable. But I also watched two quarterbacks last night face pressure, and they both managed to complete a shit ton of passes. Something for some reason we can't do. 150 yards, an accomplishment. It's a joke, man. You want to give this kid a couple weeks? I'm, I'm cool with it. Have another option ready. Right now, obviously, it's got to be Boyle. If we have anything similar to what we saw from Zach last year in either of the two Patriot games, at halftime, Tim Boyle needs to be the quarterback. It's not very hard to understand. And then going forward, you need somebody else in here. People keep saying, oh, what, what veteran are you going to bring in that's going to make any difference? Give me somebody that can read defenses, that can get the ball out quick. Ideally, Mike White would have been the nice guy to have, but too late for that. Too late for Gardner Minshew now. Too late for Teddy B. So uh, I'm not going to sit here and tell you there's another option that's going to get you to a Super Bowl. That's that's being naive, but th there are too many things that Zach is just not capable of doing yet. And it's sad that we have to watch this again and try to come up with all these excuses for him. Just because on the field he wasn't the number one reason that the Jets lost that game doesn't mean that there was an obvious effect with him being at quarterback and the game plan on both sides. On both sides. Clearly the coaching staff has very little trust in him to sling it. Clearly opposing defenses don't worry about him slinging it. And that's going to make you one-handed. That takes away your running game. And that becomes a problem. And the fact that nobody was able to adjust protections to help out Dwayne Brown, garbage. That goes for coaching. That goes for your quarterback, too. At a certain point, you got to have that internal clock that realizes, all right, my left tackle's getting beat within two seconds. I need to have somebody I can check this ball down to if I sense pressure. And he doesn't have that awareness. He just doesn't. Stop trying to tell me otherwise. So hopefully they can get some shit together, pull out a better effort this week against the Patriots. I can't say I'm very confident, honestly. I, like I said, I think it's a winnable game. I don't think the Patriots are very good, but Belichick has had Zach's number his entire career, so we'll see what happens. Talk to you guys later.